Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex. This is a gift from Magnificent Bastard, Sean Sinjerson. Sean Sinjerson, you Magnificent Bastard. <laughs> So I got this bottle. All right. And see, see Hussin. See, see Hussin. See Hussin. Uh, it wasn't until after I'd done all the stuff and got it prepped and then started doing the research mm -hmm. that I. Settling of spices is normal. Shake bottle. Oh, they got some cloudy. It's there? spiced spirit. Oh, okay. Right. So technically. So it's yeah. Spirit distilled from grain with natural, natural flavor. It's a flavored whiskey, is what it is. That is, dude. So they're not kidding. It, I don't know if it's, it's cloudy. Gonna, as yeah, shit. it's not going to come across very yeah. well. I'm holding it in the light. This is incredibly cloudy. Yeah. Like uh, usually, you should you be able to see all the details of my finger through a clear liquid. I see a very vague, blurry silhouette of yeah. my finger going through there. So I texted our friend Gene, mm -hmm. who's responsible for all the whiskey coming out of these. Guys, cat's sure, eye, yeah, right? Yeah. Gene Nassif. And I said, what the hell is this thing? Krupnik. Yeah. Yep. And he said, it's a flavored whiskey released on the holidays. 60.5. Hold on a second. Proof. Proof. Okay, I was about to say ABV. Yeah, Good yeah. Lord, that's the highest flavored whiskey I've ever seen. So proof, they proof. take a whiskey. Yeah. 30%. They add, I'm going to open it and pour it for you. Okay. They take a whiskey. They add honey, mm. orange, lemon zest. Yeah. Cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and peppercorn. Okay, you get put your finger on that right there. Damn near a hot toddy. It's, yeah. Wow, that is sticky. That's the sticky. Yeah. They you basically made, you know, seventy percent of a hot toddy in a bowl. Yeah, they recommend that you use it blended yep. with drinks and things like that. Right. Pours so, very thick. We do not normally review flavored things, mm -hmm. but I got too far down the path and I was like, "Fuck, I'm doing it." If we don't like it. Then, uh, which is likely. <laughs> you know what? Hey, okay. So I, you, you smell it real quick so we can get up to speed and then I want to say wait, words. Wait. I'll say words with my face. Whoa! Okay. What the hell is that? Now. Okay. I am curious. Our perception and our, you know, whether or not we enjoy something, we don't enjoy something. How much of that is colored by us standing here within the expectations of a whiskey oh, whiskey. Oh yeah, 100%. Now, if it, I was at a family gathering, yes. and someone was like, I've got this delightful uh, holiday beverage yes. they don't from say a local whiskey. distillery. They didn't say whiskey. Yeah, okay. from a local distillery. Mm -hmm. It's great if you heat it up a little bit and add it to yeah. tea or mm -hmm. or uh, add it to, um, add it to uh, what's the apple thing? Uh, cider, mm -hmm. right? Maybe, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. hot water. Yeah. But we're looking at this from the context, from the perspective, the position of whiskey. And man, do these natural flavors, mm -hmm. those are carrying a lot of weight. I got to tell you, this is mostly honey in my nose. Yeah, it's honey. And, and honey is expensive. The fact that honey is the dominant nose, that's interesting. No, I get, there's definitely honey in there. But the list of flavors, where did you get all of that? Right here. Okay. I just looked it up. Name it, name it again. I'm going to tell you whether or not I'm finding Cinnamon, it. Cinnamon. Yes. Cloves. Yes. Nutmeg. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, on the tail end of the nose. Peppercorn. Finish of the peppercorn. Hold on. I get that. And then honey orange. I don't get peppercorn. Absolutely honey orange. Yes. I think honey orange is probably the dominant and all the other things. Are... And then whiskey. Hmm. All right. Here we go. So thick. Man, that belongs. Mm. Heat it up. You need to mix it with something. At a holiday bar yeah. with uh, tea or something. Like, yeah. like whatever it is, it's in one of the, um, what do you call the things that keep things hot all the time? Mm. The um, the hot bringer? Crock pot. Uh, crock, crock pot. It's called the hot bringer. The hot bringer. The crock pot. Like you never, you ever get a crock pot of cider or, or like mold wine or something like that? Mm. This is in that category. You add hot water, heat it up, and just dole it out with cinnamon sticks. All right, this is what I'm telling you. Take another sip. Mm-hmm. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. Pumpkin pie. With extra cinnamon. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, if you went way too heavy handed with the spices in a pumpkin pie. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Finishes. Even the breadiness. Yeah, finishes very pumpkin pie. Not the first half, but the second half. Blah, blah, blah. Shifts gears into so, pumpkin pie. Gene, sorry, oh, and Sean, get thanks, get rid of the ice, like. Get rid of the ice machine entirely? Yeah. Okay. It broke. Oh. We used it like four times. Yeah, and every time it made shitty ice. Uh, what else? What else do you want to drink? 
Because you know what this reminds me of? Well, it reminds me of a very short episode. It reminds me... We're not going to give a lot of time to. ...of this Teeling Black Pits. I think there are elements of the Teeling that arguably could be present. Obviously, the AB is mandatory at this point. Yeah, very important. Just for science, mm -hmm. really. I noticed your pour was slightly more generous than it mine. Was, if it was, it was by accident. <laughs> it wasn't an intentional sliding. Wow. That is... Woo, that is dense honey yeah. smoke, man. You know what? Why do I get excited whenever there is a peated Irish? Because it's rare. It is rare. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I want something peated, go to, yeah. just go to Scotland. But something about I see an Irish and I see peated. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of get, uh, I'm not chubbed up, but we're not doing that direction. Mmm. Yep, it's it not is... at all the same. Totally different. Yep. Who saw that coming, really? <laughs> like, I... You know you what? Know. We'll circle back. Yeah, yeah. We'll circle back. Yeah. Just to, gotta circle back. To the teeling. Gotta give it a moment to breathe. Yeah. And then we'll circle back. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's closer than we thought with a little air. Yeah. Yeah, it's a neck pour. Yeah. Oh, that explains it. Circle back. Mr. Hunter of Buchanan. Love hearing about the current state of the whiskey industry for yeah. you, too. The bourbon junkies have been talking about the oak shortage as well. Yes. It's a thing. Among other issues lately with barrel picks, et cetera, they speak from a point of view of enthusiastic consumers, mm -hmm. and I love hearing how the distillers feel as well. Yeah, that's one of the fun things we're really able to talk about when we're doing these things is the impact of how it's helped making the, the makers, yeah. not just the drinkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the oak shortage, I mean, here's the thing. It's not a long, long-term problem, but in the meantime, holy hell, man. Like, especially if you were a bourbon-only distillery. It's not a forever, like, Pete. Yeah. Like, peat takes thousands of years to produce. Yeah, trees when are a little, bit, a, yeah. a little bit more quick. When we run out of peat, that's going to be a real problem. But yeah. trees, it's like, okay, give us another 50 years. Right. <laughs> Some of these will be fine. And, they've, and they're already, <coughs> they've been already addressing this by building forests and protecting them and things like that. Well, so it's, and it's not like <coughs> the biggest spirit category in the States is required to use new oak. Oh, yeah. Now, which, what we're about to see, which I'm really excited yes, about. Yes, yes, we're talking about the single malt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 What we're about to see is an explosion in American single malt. Yes. In the next two to five years. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's... Because they're going to start putting it in used oak mm. in the next year and a half. Yeah. That means it's, we got at least two to five years before it's all aging and right. getting bottled. And so I guess between now and when Cash graduates high school, mm -hmm. uh, my youngest son, in yeah. the next seven years, mm -hmm. malt, American malt, I think, take off. I think I've said it a couple of times before, but the category of whiskey that I think is the most underestimated, mm -hmm. American single malt. Yep, I agree. We've had, I think if we were to do what are the best whiskeys nobody's ever heard of? It's almost all American single malt. Most of those would be American single malts. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing some phenomenal stuff. But people are so familiar with bourbon. Bourbon has had such a huge head start. I think maybe... If American single malt was ever going to have a chance to get a lot of exposure and a lot of attention, it would have to be in a situation like this. Otherwise, people they have so much momentum going down the bourbon path. Yeah, they're yeah. just going to stay there. But yeah. So, uh, circling back. Circling back. Let's try that Teeling Black Pits one more time <laughs> just to see. Oh yeah, there's yeah, the peat. There's yeah, the peat. There's that Irish peat. Very good, peat very, peat. very earthy peat. Mmm, mm. nice. Yeah, yeah. Still, you know, surprisingly, nothing like it. It gets like, uh, it's earthy peat. Oh, we're not reviewing this. Anyways. Yeah. So it's earthy peat. And then it gets kind of floral and malty on the finish. Mm hmm And buttery. This is when you circle back. Yeah. You get those flavors. Yeah. Circle back. Uh, surprisingly, though. Huh. <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> nothing like the Krupnik. <laughs> but, but, all right. Now, look, the good news is, you okay. don't have to feel bad. All right, right. Okay. Because Gene, our friend Gene, who's yeah. responsible for a lot of these so, whiskeys, yeah. we have multiple things that he's proud of sure. coming up to review. Fine. So he'll get his fair shake. Right, right, right. And Sean, this does not need to be on a whiskey review channel. No. Yeah. Uh, I think if it was living with something else, like a tea or a cider, or if it was mm -hmm. cold or if it was hot, this is not a neat pour. No. Yeah, anything. But circling back. That tealing. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.